Hi, I'm Ashley, self-proclaimed resources nerd and staff member here at Futures Northwest. In this series, Northwest Career and College Connections, I'll be interviewing folks from local colleges and apprenticeship programs in Skagit and Whatcom County to highlight new and important information so that you can take your next step after high school with confidence. Today's guest is the wonderful Grace Jones from Western Washington University. Grace is answering questions today about admissions, resources, financial aid, so that you're supported in making your dream into a reality. Be sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single tip to support your future success. Got a question? Leave it in the comment section below. Welcome, Grace. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yay. So can you tell me a little bit about your role at Western and your role at Futures Northwest? Certainly. So um, at Western, I am the Associate Director of Admissions for Outreach and Access. So really what that means is that I oversee um, all things kind of outward facing when it comes to outreach and recruitment. So um, if you've seen an admissions counselor in one of your high schools, um, most likely they are on my team. Um, so any, any program you may have attended on campus or even if you took a campus tour at Western or came for a group visit, probably also coordinated by someone on my team. So a really fun job um, that we have in our office of getting to go out to high schools, meet with students, and then um, on the other end, um, getting to read all of your applications and make decisions on applications for admission. Awesome. At Futures Northwest, I am the vice president. So I've been involved with that organization um, officially for a couple of years. Um, but then before that, um, before I worked at Western, actually, I worked at Whatcom Community College and I was involved with Futures Northwest there supporting the financial aid application workshops, quick start to college and some other programs that we have. So it's been really exciting to be on the board and get to kind of help with planning some of those programs now and promoting them to the community and really dovetails nicely with my role at Western because we're all just promoting um, higher education and access for, for students. Thank you. So what would be your best advice um, for incoming first generation college students joining you this year? Um, I would say, um, you know, getting getting involved is probably a, a good piece of advice. Um, there's a lot going on on campus all the time. Um, I think there's the tendency when you are um, first starting out in college to kind of just um, go to class and do your homework and then maybe, you know, go back to your dorm or go home if you live at home. Um, and I would just say get involved, you know, find something that you're excited or passionate about on campus and, and do that, right? So find, um, find something exciting, whether it's a club, um, or um, an organization or something like that, and you'll meet people instantly, which is great. Um, I would also say advice um, would be to visit, visit your teachers and visit your professors in their office hours. Um, a lot of times the, the teachers at Western are just sitting in their offices waiting for students to, to come and visit them. Um, it also really sets you apart. If you're in a, a class with 30 people or 50 people, um, to go and ask a question or just really introduce yourself um, to your professors that can really set you apart um, as as a student in their class so i highly recommend that um, let's see other advice for for students um, there are a lot of services um, throughout the college and they're they're there they're there for you and i think that the college is one of the only times in your life that things are going to be really free and accessible to you. So whether it's, you know, getting um, a chance to meet with a licensed therapist or, um, you know, utilizing the student recreation center, which is our gym, right? All those things are going to cost money after, after you graduate um, from college, right? It's like $150 an hour to see a therapist um, or, you know, $40 a month to join a gym. And of course you're paying tuition and you're paying fees. So it's not necessarily free, but it's all included in those tuition and fees. So there's so many things for you to take advantage of when you are in college. Um, and you don't really realize it until after you've graduated that um, some of that stuff um, is no longer accessible to you. So we have a student health center, um, which is great. So if you're feeling sick, um, you can go there and all of that stuff is, is available to you. So lots of great resources. Um, 
it's not always easy for us um, in, in student services to reach out to you. We try to as best as possible to students, but sometimes you have to come and find um, what you're looking for. And I will just say that at Western, people are really nice. Um, so if yes. you're in the wrong office, they'll definitely point you in the right direction. So kind of a, a long answer there, but lots of it, lots of exciting things to do at Western. So I would just say reach out, um, get involved, and visit your professors in office hours. Yes, I totally agree. Um, what is your favorite thing about being a part of the Western Washington University community? So I was a student myself at Western. Um, I was a transfer student. I started out at Whatcom Community College and then I transferred to Western after two years at Whatcom. Um, and so both as a student and as, um, as a staff member now, um, I really value Western's um, emphasis on student success and equity. Um, I think that Western really values the student voice. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I think we're the number one, or at least in the, the top few, uh, most active associated students in the nation um, at universities. So very, very active associated student body and really, um, Western really listens to the student voice and makes changes um, based on that. So um, it, it's, a really, it's a really fun campus to be a student at because you really see change happen um, and change, and you can really be a change maker as a student there. Um, I really think that the faculty uh, care a lot about students. Um, it's a pretty casual, laid back uh, place, you know, being, being in Bellingham, which you're, you're all used to. Um, you know, you might, you might have a professor that's um, teaching in, in jeans and slippers, or you might have someone who's wearing, you know, a tweed suit with the elbow patches. You kind of just get, get the gamut. But um, I think, you know, being in Bellingham and having such an emphasis on um, student success and equity and then sustainable practices is really what sets, sets Western apart and it's what I love about, about working there. That's awesome. And what would you say is unique? Like what, what does Western have that other places don't? Um, well, I, I do think um, kind of what I was mentioning before about the really active student body. I think that that really does set, set Western apart. Um, I think that the, the location is, is really unique. And again, if you're a local student, that's, that's not going to sound super exciting, but um, we have people, we have students coming from all over the country to be in a place that has ocean and mountains, um, you know, right at their doorstep and to be able to go ski at Mount Baker in the winter or, you know, kayak um, on the lake or in the bay in the spring. Um, I think definitely the location sets us apart. Um, but then also what I was saying earlier is just that emphasis on student success. So we have so many resources for students to, to be able to be successful. You're not in this alone, right? There's an entire division um, in the college that I'm a part of called the Enrollment and Student Services Division, and it's all about serving students. So whether it is the associated students or career services to help you find a job, or the advising center to help you plan your schedule and make sure that you're on track with all those little um, requirements that you have to meet, just like in high school, right? You've got to meet all those requirements, make sure you have the right number of electives and that kind of thing. So there's an entire division that are, that are here to, to help you. And that includes financial aid and um, the scholarship center, so many different offices that work with students and that really have student student success at the forefront of our minds. Mm -hmm. I think it's so important that message of reaching out to what's available to you and accessing it. I wouldn't have been able to get through it without having taken advantage of all of those resources because they're not, none of it's intuitive. Like these systems are not like easy mm -hmm. by any shape um, of the imagination. So I just think like, access all of the things, ask the questions. There are no stupid questions. Mm. It's all important to ask and receive services for. Agreed. Okay, yeah. so can you tell us about housing on campus and how students get matched with roommates? Yeah, yeah, so Western um, does have um, a variety of options for dorms. Um, we also have on-campus apartments. Um, First-year students do not have to live in the dorms, but about 90% of our students do choose to do that, um, but it's not required for our freshmen. Um, 
So there's, there's a couple of options. Um, you can be in a single or a double and um, I highly encourage you to visit campus um, if you get an opportunity to kind of assess which dorm you might want to um, live in. Yeah. So the application for housing, um, when you go to apply for housing, um, it's based, your priority for housing is based on your application for admission. So if you applied, let's say on November 1st and met our early action deadline, you would have really, really good uh, housing priority. Oh. If you applied, by our regular decision um, deadline on January 31st, you'd have pretty good priority. Um, if you apply after that date, um, less so. So advice that we always give to students is, you know, you're going to have a roommate most likely. And so try to find a roommate that applied earlier than you. Or, or maybe you are the one who applied early and people are going to be coming after you um, as well. Because, you know, there, I would say that everybody has preferences in terms of what dorms they want to live in. Um, and we really try to give students their preference um, when they, when you rank um, which dorm you'd like to live in, you know, my first choice, my second choice, et cetera. Um, but that's one thing to keep in mind is that, um, you know, um, if you're applying for housing, that it is based on your application for admission. Oh, um, yeah. When you are choosing a roommate, there's a few different options. Um, the first option is you might have a friend from high school that you know is also coming to Western and you want to be, you want to live with them. You want to be their roommate. Great. Um, just let us know. Um, and you'll see this when you go to the, to the housing, um, website, right. And they would do the same. And then that would be the easiest way to get you two matched. Mm -hmm. Um, another option is to fill out the find my roommate questionnaire, um, which kind of does, um, it kind of goes through almost like a, a dating site a questionnaire and, you know, just asks you about your lifestyle, right? Um, when do you go to bed, when do you wake up? Um, are you a, an introvert, an extrovert? Um, you know, those, those kinds of questions, right? To kind of best fit you with someone um, who would be a good fit for you. Now, you can have the housing folks decide for you based on the questionnaire you fill out, or you can get matched with a couple of folks and then you can um, work with them to see if they would be a good, good fit with you. So a couple of options. You go in and um, you bring in your best friend from high school and you say, we want to be roommates, or you kind of go through a little bit of a match interview process to find a good roommate, or you just say, here's all the information about me, pick someone for me. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Um, how do you recommend students getting connected with various clubs and activities? Is there a place that they would go on campus to do that? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, so our associated, so Viking Union is our student, our student union. Um, and within the Viking Union, um, we have all of our clubs, um, the Associated Students houses all the clubs. Um, the Multicultural Center is a beautiful new space um, in the Viking Union that houses a bunch of clubs um, that are really great. Um, but Western has so many clubs. I think we have over 250 clubs. And so if you just go to, um, Western's website and look for the student club tab there, you will be able to see all of the clubs and a short description of what, um, what they do. And there's things from, I mean, uh, you wouldn't even believe some of the clubs. They have a, a, a Disney club where you sit around and watch Disney movies. There's a cereal eating club where you get together and eat cereal. There's a Quidditch club where you play Quidditch, um, you know, on the, on the lawn. There's lots of different clubs. And then there's a lot of clubs for each of the majors at Western. So if you are um, a communications major like I was, then you might be in the communications club. Um, a great opportunity to get some experience on your resume um, and, and great opportunities to meet people that are in, interested in similar um, activities that you are or identify with a certain community or identity. There's all sorts of wonderful ways to get involved. So I would just say, you know, go to the Associated Students um, page on Western Woods website and just scroll through and, and see if there's any clubs that you're interested in. You can also like, um, like we said, visit the Viking Union um, to get more information about that. And if for some reason out of the 250 plus clubs, if there's one that you wish you see, but you don't, you can always start your own. Right. That's awesome. And then what would be the three, like top three resources that you would recommend for a first gen student coming to Western? 
So I would say the, the first one would be student outreach services. So student outreach services is a great, it's a great resource. So they work specifically with first generation students and they are really holistic in their process. Um, they will help you with um, financial aid. They will help you with advising. They will help you with literally anything. So if you have something going on um, personally or academically, um, you will just, you'll be assigned a coach or kind of an advisor. So it'll be a lot like your high school counselor right now, um, except even more accessible. Um, they're, the number of students that they meet with is fairly small. So they're able to meet with you quite a bit and give you a lot of really great information. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mentioned academic advising earlier um, to help you plan your schedule and keep you on track with all those little um, you know, requirements that you need to graduate. Student Outreach Services does advising and a lot of other things within there. So I would just say respond to their email because you probably will get an email from, um, from your advisor in Student Outreach Services introducing themselves and, and um, reaching out to set up an appointment with you. And I would just say respond to them. It's going to be the best decision that you ever made um, because you will have so much support going through Western um, with, through that office. It's, yeah. it's fantastic. So that totally. would be my number one for sure. Um, and again, they specifically work with first generation um, students. So definitely, definitely um, do that. And if for some reason you don't get that email, um, they are housed in Old Main. Awesome. Um, on the third floor. Yay, thank you. Um, I would say the second resource that I would advise you on would be the tutoring center. So I mentioned office hours earlier with faculty, um, but the tutoring center is free for students. You can go and make an appointment. Um, they're going to have tutoring for some of the kind of common subjects that a lot of students need support in, like math. Um, languages, things like that. But you can have a, you can um, assign or you can request a tutor in a variety of subjects and have someone um, help you work through any struggles that you're having. So again, that's kind of another thing that um, I took for granted, right? When I graduated um, college, you know, realizing, wow, tutors are expensive. You know, if you want to get a math tutor, you'll probably pay them 40 or $50 an hour. Um, and that's, that's something that's, that's free for students or, or included in your tuition and fees. So that's another one definitely to, to take advantage of as a resource. Um, and then finally, I would just say um, the financial aid um, office and the scholarship center. So when you apply for admission, you're automatically um, evaluated for scholarships. Um, so you know, coming in as a first year student, you might already have all of the scholarships that you are that you are going to get um, from admissions. But that doesn't mean that there aren't additional scholarships through our office, through specific departments on campus. So for example, um, there are some scholarships that are specific to a major um, that you might be interested in. So if you want to major in business, there are scholarships that are specific to, to majors in business. Um, as well as, you know, just kind of going into the financial aid office and saying, hey, um, I'm interested in scholarships. Can you let me know which scholarships no one has applied for yet, right? And just asking that question because um, scholarships go, a lot of scholarships go unawarded. Um, and a, a, lot of, um, a lot of outreach is done and we try to get the word out. Um, but it's, you know, if you have to write a paragraph or something like that, it's totally worth it to get that extra thousand dollars or um, three thousand dollars or whatever that looks like. So I would just say kind of finding out what scholarships are available um, and, and taking the time to apply for them because um, you would be surprised how few students apply for scholarships. Yeah, I agree. Grace, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's really great. Yay! So for more detailed information on today's video and other resources, check out the show notes and feel free to leave any questions or comments for Grace or myself down below. Remember to subscribe to this channel for more resources and information to take your next step after high school with confidence. If you want even more great resources, check out our website at futuresnw.org. And I hope to see you next time on Northwest Career and College Connections. Bye. Bye. Good luck. Go Vikings. <laughs>